everyone and welcome back to another episode of Columbia City. Today is episode 16 and we're going to be building a, a more detailed build um, than usual. Usually I try to stick to a level of detail that I can maintain really throughout the city, but today I want to work on an area that's to a decent degree more detailed, uh, at least the streets um, specifically. Uh, generally, other than that, I'll, I'll keep to a level of detail that I'll, I'll use throughout the rest of the city, but I really wanted to make these streets um, highly detailed, and I'll be able to copy and paste what I've done here to other areas in the city. So I'm using this bike lane street from the workshop, I believe by Sea Game World, and uh, this is amazing because it's got a bike lane uh, that's two directions uh, that's protected. However, I want to make it even more protected and more realistic. Because in Seattle, there are a lot of protected bike lanes. Like, Seattle has really good bike infrastructure, but it's got a lot of these two-way protected bike lanes uh, in the city. Um, and I, I wanted to capture that here. You might notice that I've placed these uh, bike lanes before in the city in many different places. Uh, or these, these roads with the bike lanes on them. However, um, they've got th th this specific... Uh, bike lane road is sort of problematic for me because I'm building an American city and this has white lines uh, that are dashed as the median even though it's two-way and it has um, like white lines in the middle of the green uh, bike markings which is sort of unfortunate but I figured out a solution uh, I'm covering everything with asphalt and I'm going to basically edit the um, the different bike lanes uh, individually um, and add their own uh, yellow medians instead or, or yellow uh, median markings instead of the white ones. So basically I'm using this road as a base but functionally making my own custom road here. Um, so I'm using these curbs by I believe Ronix to um, like as a barrier I have like just three of them next to each other. It's a lot of props but I'm not really placing too many props in the city so I'm not that worried about it. I know you guys are going to tell me I could just use PO here or something like I don't really want to download PO. Columbia City is too big for me to use PO in it um, but this is the best I'm going to be able to do and I'm not going to be zooming in too much here so I just want it to look like there's a nice barrier in between the um, the protected bike lane and the main the main road and what I'm doing is I'm placing asphalt here and then I'm placing down um, so yellow lines because you can just make your own double yellow medians as long as the road uh, isn't too complicated you should be able to manage that um, for, for since I'm using poppable asphalt here however uh, this road has to be completely flat so I flattened the area entirely and I'm just gonna have to be doing that for like you know whenever I build an area uh, like this where I have to make custom medians but as you can see, I'm, I've done that here, and then I'm trying to... I'm adding a the yellow uh, lines, the dashed yellow lines in the middle of the protected bike lane uh, to make it realistic. Because, I mean, if you look in Seattle, what I'm doing is actually more realistic than using fully green protected bike lanes um, as the double bike lanes. Because in Seattle, like, you'll, you'll have these protected bike lanes that are, you know, two-way, but they'll be asphalt. They, they won't be uh, colored green, only green at the intersections, uh, which is exactly what I'm doing here. And another thing you'll notice, I use some rainbow crosswalks at the intersections because there's some of those in Seattle as well. Um, like, I tried to basically base this off of a lot of the uh, more newly developed streets in Seattle that have been using decent planning principles. Um, that I, I really wanted to implement here in Columbia City, but I wanted to make them very, very um, realistic. Like, I didn't want to just place down a, um, like, two-way protected bike lane road that looks totally unlike what you'd see in Seattle. Because, once again, it is totally different um, than, like, in terms of, like, in terms of visuals than, than what you see in Seattle. Um, so I've been, I'm really happy with how like, I ended up managing to do this. I, I just felt like building something like this. And it, it's something that w when we take cinematics of the city, we will um, definitely be zooming in on uh, in the future just so that I'm able to, like, have different areas of the city that I'm that, that are more, like, focused on in the cinematics just so that I guess we have, like, some high detail areas that we can, that we can focus on. So, yeah. Um, I, wow, I just talked for a long time. Uh, I mean, if you're enjoying so far uh make sure to leave a like uh helps out a ton uh i don't know really what else to say right now 
I guess we're just placing more buildings. Like, I'm trying to place a bunch of more modern buildings here. Like, I have this Hampton in here. I have a bunch of these, like, newer apartment blocks by King Leno, um, which I put signs on saying, like, luxury apartments for lease. You'll see that. Um, and I'm actually, like, I'm trying to flatten out this entire area here because this... This road is like, cause once again, like it has to be completely flat. So all the surrounding things also need to be flat. Um, and yeah, let's see the, like I, I only really detail the area around this main road here and you'll see like, I'm really detailing it. Like I'm placing like bike decals in the middle of the uh, intersections there. Um, I'm also placing like cracks on the part of the road that's the like part of the road that's for traffic because the idea is that the protected bike lanes are like newer like it's a newer part of the road um, that was more developed more recently and the only thing that was done when they uh, transitioned over to that uh, for the traffic lanes was like no repave it was just like you moved the markings over when there was this sort of road diet on this road um, and yeah like it's pretty realistic uh, I'm, I'm very happy with how this turned out i honestly don't even remember specifically how i came up with this idea but it's nice to be like very detailed and creative once in a while uh, and it must be like really satisfying to be like a creator like skib or somebody like noguchi who just makes like m stuff that's like much better than this but like extremely detailed all the time it's like photorealistic to like a an insane degree like that sounds like a lot of fun but I, I also really like building big cities so i can't really do that but like striking the right balance is really the, the core of what i try to do um in my cities it's like a balance between the ultra hyper photorealism and you know like scale like building a big city and i mean if, if you want to know how i do that kind of thing um, you can check out, there's a tutorial that I'll put in the top right of the screen, uh, right now that's basically all about that. Um, it's, it's on how make, how do you, how you can make your city realistic, but also, you know, build a big city. Um, and I, I basically just give some strategies for that if you want to check that out. But, um, yeah, let's see what else. I'm placing more, uh, stuff here. I, I placed those signs that I talked about earlier. I'm trying to figure out what roads to use for these avenues here. I end up downloading some, um, some different American roads from the workshop that are using the Roads United North America Plus textures, and you'll see those a little bit, I think, either later in the episode or in a future episode. I think it's a future episode, actually, but, um, they, they look better uh than what i'm doing here like I'm, once again i i've removed roads united from my city completely just because this city is going to be going on for who knows how long and i honestly can't be using roads united at this point when it's not really supported anymore i mean i'm still using it in new windsor and it works totally fine it's just i want to plan for the future and i feel like this city like new windsor is going to last for a long time more but like this city is going to last way longer than even new windsor will um, so yeah, like that, that's sort of the idea behind that. I wanted to sort of future proof the city. Uh, that's why I'm not using Roads United, but like there are a lot of good alternatives in the workshop. There are also these, uh, really, th th like really dark and, uh, like newly made roads, um, that are, that have totally American textures on them, which is pretty cool. Um, however, I can't really use them in the, the heart of the city because the asphalt needs to be a little bit more worn, but in the suburbs, I'm definitely going to be using those roads because I want to build, like, extremely, um, I guess, like, over-suburbanized sunbelt suburbs. I guess, you, like, I, I don't know, you get what I mean by sunbelt, like, just the, like, full-on American suburbanization. I know Seattle's not in the sunbelt, obviously, but um, that sort of style of suburb with maybe more Seattle-style homes, because um, there is that kind of suburb to some degree in, in the outskirts of Seattle. Um, just like full on, like when you think of like American subdivision suburbia, like it, it exists in Seattle. So, uh, we'll have to make sure we, uh, capture that, uh, in Columbia city. Um, yeah, what else? Let's see. We're, we're working on, uh, this Marriott here. I had some trouble trying to figure out like whether or not to have like a awning for cars to drop like, uh, baggage off. I, I was trying to say either baggage or luggage there. Um, I could have said either, but it almost became a combination of the two. We'll just go with baggage, um, whatever. Uh, but yeah, like, basically just place, uh, a place for them to drop stuff off. But I wasn't able to integrate that here, because I wanted to have a big patio. Um, 
and that yeah it ended up I i'm happy with it like theoretically the cars could sort of park because like there's a parking lane right next to the front of the uh marriott i might be able to like edit that in the future so that there's like a loading zone decal or something like but that's totally fine rather than having the awning the awning is like a very um suburban thing in a lot of situations uh like when you're in the city you're not gonna necessarily gonna have uh, like a designated place at a hotel for you to drive and you know drop your stuff off at the entrance so yeah uh even though the awnings sort of exist in the asset i i sort of repurposed them as like little cafes or whatever um, yeah, like, and I'm placing a bunch of these, uh, different apartments and, like, mixed-use buildings here. Like, the whole idea is just building a bunch of mixed-use stuff, and, uh, I've talked about this before, but there's a creator in the workshop called Smiley's who's been making a bunch of really awesome mixed-use development, which you should definitely check out. It, it's really good for, uh, Columbia City and just cities like this that are, that have a lot of newer development that's smarter than a lot of the older development, um, or, well, not necessarily older, but sort of, I guess, the, the, the more 20th century development. Because, um, like, the way older developments, a lot of the time, like, smarter than everything. Um, but, yeah, like, a lot of the 20, 20th century stuff is more, like, separated um, and segregated um, zoning, which is uh, not ideal a lot of the time. So, yeah. Um, we are, yeah, I'm building sort of the parking garage behind this hotel, and I'm making sure to, like, add a little path from the parking garage to the hotel. I was going to make it, like, attached to the hotel, but I wanted to put it along the street so I could have a little courtyard behind the um, hotel, which is sort of connected to, like, an apartment building. Um, and, yeah, like, these apartments are definitely not supposed to be affordable. Um, like, a lot of the... Because when these areas are built up... Um, it's rare that you'll get like a full-on you know new development that's extremely smart with like lots of affordable housing i mean it's getting more common but um a, a lot of the time this is really just you know full-on gentrification in uh neighborhoods that are you know close to downtown close to the city and that's sort of just how it is it, especially like in the west coast uh, or not necessarily especially but just notably in the west coast um like san francisco seattle a lot of that stuff sort of going on um and yeah like I, I mean that's just sort of how it is so i have to i have to stick to the realism here but uh, i've got this sort of weird crescent shaped building which i really like i think it's supposed to be a dormitory but i'm using it as like a little apartment building of some sort and i'm placing like fences around it and i'm gonna place a bunch of uh, like courtyards and stuff i'm adding like a lot more nature than you might expect in a city that's uh, the density of columbia city but once again, this is based off Seattle, and, like, Seattle has trees, like, everywhere. It, it, it's an extremely heavily wooded city, and, um, that's, I mean, it, it's in the Pacific Northwest. That's sort of, like, Seattle's thing. Washington's the evergreen state. So, I'm trying to capture that here, and that's, you, you'll see, like, I place some enormous pine trees in a couple of minutes, uh, over here. I'm also trying to figure out what specific selection of pine trees I want to use for the city. And I want to figure that out now because in New Windsor what happened was I was using different types of trees. Like I wasn't, like the sugar maples have been out for like a long time, but I was still just using Padelmo's larger um, uh, late fall trees, which ended up looking good, but like not exactly the look I was going for. And then I just figured that out like way later and then I figured out, okay, I really still want these late fall trees, but I want to have a lot more sugar maples than I'm currently using. And that balance I figured out later. I want to figure that that out uh, early in Columbia City, just so that I'm able to make sure all of the areas have more uniform vegetation, or like not necessarily uniform, but vegetation that sort of uh, carries over and isn't too drastically different. Because obviously, not everywhere is going to have completely uniform vegetation. Like you're going to have open areas and wooded areas and stuff like that. But yeah, uh, hopefully you understand what I'm sort of saying here. Um, and then, uh, also, I, mess I, I mentioned on the in the last episode, I, I was considering the possibility of building, like, a stratovolcano-type mountain, uh, like Mount Rainier in the city, and how that was sort of unlikely, but I sort of wanted to do it, possibly. But it, it's sort of hard to do in the game because the height limit. Well, okay, so uh, a suggestion was given to put it on the way edge of the map, where it's covered largely by edge fog. That's a good idea because it really adds a lot of perspective to something like that because if you place it 
uh, away from the edge fog, it looks like it's just there like, in the city. Like, you'll have a little bit of distance fog, but it looks really close. And when it's the size I want to make it with snow caps and stuff, that won't really look too realistic. So if I can manage to do that with edge fog, that would be pretty cool. And I'm going to look into doing that. So whoever gave that suggestion, I forget... Uh, your name, but I think I've responded to your comment. Thank you for that suggestion. I might I might take you up on that one Because um, I do want to have like a snow cap peak uh, Somewhere outside of this the city like Mount Hood uh, in Portland's or Mount Rainier in uh, Seattle uh, slash Tacoma area um, I, I love how I use slash just in a in a normal dialogue like not even just typing it the internet has completely taken over my life I'm pretty proud of myself there. I just recorded audio for 15 minutes straight, which is like a lot more than I usually do. Sometimes I'll just do five minutes and then another five minutes and then like three minutes and then two minutes. And it just doesn't get you know, like, I'm really bad at recording long stretches of audio. So I'm pretty happy with myself for that. But we've got a couple more minutes here. So I figured I'd ask you guys like how you're doing in the midst of this sort of crisis that the world is going through. And if you are like what, what you've done to change your lifestyle, uh, what you've had to do, what you've voluntarily done, uh, what everybody's doing around you, like what your country's basically done. Because I know you guys are from absolutely everywhere. So let me know where you're from and what's going on in your life. Because I'd love to hear. Because it's this is uh, it's a pretty rare opportunity for me, me to be able to do that. Because it's, it's it's really crazy how huge and like diverse um, the audience of the channel is like you guys are from absolutely everywhere like i asked um in a couple new windsor videos ago where you were from and it, i just got like i swear every country on earth it was crazy so i mean this is definitely an opportune time to ask that again but like also ask what's going on uh where you're at because i know it's definitely different absolutely everywhere so yeah just uh let me know in the comments because that would be that'd be pretty cool i mean we're, we're a community here so hopefully we can uh, all learn from each other and like what What's going on in each other's lives in the midst of whatever is even going on at this point? I don't think anybody really uh, knows what this timeline is anymore. But uh, but yeah, this is that's basically it. Uh, I think we're gonna hop in game now. I actually have to switch Steam accounts because I've been working on New Windsor. Uh, I'm gonna go switch Steam accounts, hop in game, and take a look at what we built in this episode because it was really detailed, and I really want to make sure you guys get um, perspective on like all the different details we added here. Uh, where this sort of fits in within the context of the city, what I'm going to plan to do around it, what I'm going to plan to do in future episodes, stuff like that. We're going to cover that. So I'm going to hop in game and I'll see you guys there. All right, folks, we are in game. Let's take a look at, at what we built here because it's really satisfying. Um, if you look at this, people are actually using the bike lane. Um, it And they're swerving around each other and look, look at that. Like, it's not like they just stay stationary either. Like, it, it's very realistic the way they're using this. It's, look, it's so satisfying to just look at that, except uh, I can't really get rid of um, the trucks that are going across the street to the shops. That's sort of annoying. Uh, one thing I could do is theoretically, like, turn these buildings off with some sort of mod. I don't know. It doesn't really matter too much to me, though. But, yeah, over here we've got a bunch of mixed-use development. Like, you've got Starbucks and whatever other shops on the bottom floor. Like, you've got a subway here. And up above, you just got apartments, um, and over here you have the the hotel with a Starbucks at the bottom, hotel on the other side as well, and then yeah, like mixed more mixed use stuff over here. Just generally very mixed use in this specific area, um, but yeah, like definitely really good bike infrastructure that is extremely satisfying to watch. Like let's just like sit here for a second and admire how smooth and satisfying all of this is like it's just ah it's so beautiful it just works very well I, i'm happy we managed to to make this because i'm going to be able to copy paste what we did here to a bunch of the other areas in the city where i want to build good bike infrastructure but don't want to spend too much time on it um but yeah like look at that that looks like really realistic it and it looks like the bike lane was made more recently than the rest of the um the rest of the stuff because it's it's got newer looking pavement and yeah i mean this is that's it like i don't really have too much more to show you here um i mean we made a bunch of greenery and stuff like that i didn't really detail this area back here yet um we did detail this here which is pretty cool and those are those pines that i was talking about the really tall pines these are Norf norfolk island pines i don't know if they're native to the pacific northwest at all i'm pretty sure they're not but 
they look pretty cool anyway. Um, but yeah, this is the city. Uh, the idea with the um, big mountain in the background is I would probably like do it over here, or I would do it over here. I don't know. Um, there's a chance I could also do it over there and terraform some of the stuff around it a little bit, but I, I, I'm not sure. Like, I, I feel like this would be more realistic if I did it over here. I don't know if I, do I have edge fog on? I don't think I even have edge fog on. Let me actually turn that on. I don't know if it'll um, work uh, initially. Wait, let's see. Closet fog toggler. Do I even have that mod in? Wait, I have to have it installed because I have the edge fog disabled. There we go. Disable edge fog, disabled, disable distance fog, disabled. Okay, we're gonna just have to um, wait and see because uh, I'm not gonna be able to get that to re-enable itself um, just for the time being. I only have distance fog re-enabling itself. I'm just gonna have to wait to reload the game for edge fog to, to come back, but that's fine. Um, for now, we can just use what we've got. Um, and I actually removed the, uh, the, the mod that allows you to um, go it's called camera positions utility basically allows you to zoom out really really far but i can actually still zoom out pretty far and i, I think it's because i'm using the first person camera mod uh, and i think that might allow you to zoom out further which is actually really cool because the whole reason i was using the camera positions utility other than like not getting like not colliding wait let me actually check something quickly is there a prevent ground clipping no oh no this is still um doing that okay let's see yeah that doesn't look like there's a doesn't look yeah because I was just gonna see because I don't like it when I'm zooming around these buildings and then it just makes me like it moves the camera on top of them I don't really like that so the camera positions utility got rid of that. If you guys have any other way of doing that, that'd be great. Because the problem with camera positions utility is it was like destroying every bit of shadow past a certain point on the map um, from my camera. So it was not working for me. So now I'm using this mod and it's better. Um, and I've placed some American roads around here, which look pretty good. Although these are like the older versions of these, so I have to replace them. Um... But yeah, that's that's sort of that there. I don't really have too much more to to say here. Uh, another thing I wanted to mention though is that I'm going to try to place a bunch of logos on these buildings. I'm not going to do it in this uh, in this um, specific uh, live play. I'll probably do it in a time lapse in the future. But like, I can't do it in the live play because this is an older save, and actually in a newer save, I've already placed a Sears logo on this building. Um, and I don't want to just have my work go to waste, so we'll definitely just have to wait to do that. But I'm going to place logos on a lot of these um, big buildings. Like, I might place, like, a Citibank logo on that building or whatever. Stuff like that. Just to make it look a little bit more realistic. Um, but, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, it looks like I have a duplicate hotel over here. I'm going to have to remove that, but that's fine. I love how this street looks. Hopefully you do as well. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like. Helps out a ton. Helps people find the channel. Uh, you can subscribe if you're new around here. Hit the bell icon. You know the deal. Um, and that that uh, you know, you'll make sure that you never miss a Columbia City video. Um, let's see what else you could um, you could support me on Patreon if you want to go and fly around in game like I am right now. Get access to the save game. Um, do that over on Patreon. You could just build in the Columbia City map. Um, that sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, so just go over to Patreon if you're interested in that or you want to get videos early. Um, and you can support me over there. It's definitely appreciated. Um, but well, we'll see what else. Follow me on Twitter if you want updates in this insane timeline we're in. Um, let's see. Follow me on Instagram for photorealistic screenshots, which I'm posting many of. Those are in the description. But yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed. And this is Columbia City. And it's, it's looking really good. And I will see you in the next episode.